Hi, this is Neville Douglas. I'd like to apologise for my absence over the last few months. I've just been really busy sorting things out for my Rick's Charter ship, which will be coming up. I'm going to be doing a series on how to become a chartered building surveyor. Um, but for now, what we're going to be doing is looking into a property that I've been out to view over the last few months. And uh, it has had problems with uh, <laughs> removal of basically the structural integrity of the building. So, if you want to know what this has to do with the video that I'm going to show you, then stay tuned. Run the intro. this video before we get started um, what we're going to be covering is looking at cracks the causes of cracks in some uh, to some degree but not going into too much detail um, what you should and shouldn't do what to look out for and basically the things to avoid so that you don't want to devalue your property or lose money um, it's going to be over a series of three or four videos it depends how much I can get in I'm trying to make them as short as possible because I'm trying to keep them under five minutes this one is going to be over five minutes because of all of the bits that I've tried to cram in there. Um, so over a series of, say, let's say four videos, we're going to be looking at um, cracks in walls, what causes cracks, um, how to avoid them if at all possible, what you shouldn't do with your property if you do have cracks, and um, the remedial works that need to be done. If I can't discuss that, then obviously I will recommend uh, you on to getting a building surveyor to come around and have a look at the property because there are some things that can be done just by looking at something on YouTube or a video, stuff like that. And then there are other much more severe or serious cases as in this particular property where we've had a look at it and there are uh, issues that cannot be diagnosed just by looking at the property. Um, so if this is new for you and you're getting into property for the first time and you want to learn about all kinds of building pathology because that's what I'm working towards my chartership as a Ricks building surveyor in the residential side not in the commercial side and not the valuation side so if you want to know about residential building surveying tips or things to look out for then by all means hit the subscribe button and make sure you come back to here on a weekly basis and if you like it it'll hit the bell icon too <laughs> bit of a chesty cough at the moment Okay, so this is the second side of the building. So if you imagine a, a traditional hipped roof um, where you've got um, hip on both sides. I'll do your drawing anyway. So this is the other side of the room. Or the other side of the house. This is the bathroom. He's done the same here. They've cut out the, um, I don't know if you can see that, cut out the ceiling joists again. So you've got no lateral support on two sides of the building. Okay, so this is a little video to explain um, what's happened with the roof thing. So apologies for non-live interaction, but it's quite difficult to explain on site. So basically, if you look at the previous drawing, you had the ceiling joist that went across from that side to the other, which gave lateral support. And also you had joist angers coming down, which tied in the joist hangers there, or well, sorry, the ceiling joists, with the joist hangers, which tied into the common rafter. So that was supporting the weight which came across the here. So everything was tied in, a nice and neat little triangle. Sorry for the shaky hand. So all that's been taken out now. So what you're gonna find is this brickwork here is going to start to lean because the roof is going to start to rotate. So it rotates from that point there and it almost wants to sort of do this kind of action which is flattening so obviously you've got the wind and i've told you here you've got the wind pressure and also the weight of the tiles and the gravity as well so that's all pushing down and it's trying to do that with the ceiling joists in place and the joist hangers they would have stopped that let me just see if i can no i haven't got the drawing for that i've, I've, I've altered this one 
So basically, if you look at the previous drawing, you see the joist angle coming down there, and you can see the ceiling joist. What they've done is they've removed all of that to create this almost like vaulted ceiling effect. But the problem is um, there is no lateral support across here. And so it's causing cracking in some of the rooms. If you imagine this is a loft space here and you've got the first bedroom down here and the second bedroom and the bathroom on the first floor, we're starting to see the roof do that. And traditionally you start to see cracking coming in that direction and as you watch further on through the video you'll see where there is actual cracking on one of the bedroom walls which confirms this there has been some movement i think it's settled now um, but i'm going to be using a crack monitor system on there so we can see if the movement has stopped so i hope that explains in regards to why you shouldn't remove ceiling joists or joist hangers some people remove these and leave the joist in place so that they have a free space in their loft so they can walk around and they haven't got these bits of timber hanging down but actually these bits of timber tie the ceiling joist into the common rafter and stop the ceiling from sagging and stop it from bouncing as well so they need to be left in place so these will all have to be reintroduced back into the subject property so that there are no issues in regards to rotation hopefully there's there's no there's no issues in regards to there hasn't been a lot of spread on this side now i haven't seen any evidence of uh, any sort of lateral restraints you know something that goes from that side to that side to stop the room roof from spreading so it's going to be quite interesting just going to nip into another bedroom just so i can show you some of the cracks on the walls it's mainly i think superficial um i can't really see behind this without taking the sink out and i'm not going to do that so you know he's got boarding there which covers quite a lot of the sins uh there's a bit of superficial cracking uh if you if you look here there is a little bit but that just could be natural um it's got the old line mortar. So these these were built in 2000 sorry 1911 actually so they've been here for quite a long time quite a solid building as well it's a shame that someone should uh hack it apart but that's what's happened this is what's going down the wall on the inside. This is the opposite side to what I've just looked at. And I think, uh, sounds superficial. The plaster's loose, um, but obviously it's a sign that there is uh, an indicator that there is some kind of um, structural issue. Well, I wouldn't say a structural issue, but movement anyway. So that's coming down at 45 degrees. And if you imagine the roof is on the building like that, you usually get movement coming in the opposite direction 45 degrees to where the stresses are because the roof is pushing this way against the walls and so the cracks are coming down there so that's it i'm going to go and fit the telltale and uh, i'll show you the finished result then we're going to come back and monitor it uh, over a period of time to see if there is any kind of superficial movement